Good evening. I would like to call to order the November 15, 2017 school committee meeting. The time now is 6.31 p.m. We are entering into executive session to continue discussion relative to collective bargaining with employee groups and the strategy to be followed and on continued ongoing litigation. The school committee will reconvene in open session following the executive session. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I make that motion. I'll second. So I have a motion, I have a second on the floor. This does require a roll call vote. Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mr. Francis? Aye. Mr. Cutlass? Aye. Mrs. Bennett? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. This time we'll be entering into executive session and we'll be returning up for our regularly scheduled school committee meeting at 7 p.m. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to call to order the November 15, 2017 school committee meeting. The time now is 7 p.m. The November 15, 2017 school committee meeting will be televised and recorded under the open meeting law, the public is permitted to make an audio or video recording of an open session at a public meeting. At this time, I would ask if anyone is recording tonight's meeting to please identify himself or herself. So I see Rosalind Impink for the town crier. Welcome, Ms. Impink. Is there anyone else? At this time, I'd like everyone to stand and ask our honored guest to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this evening. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's really wonderful to see so many smiley faces out in the audience tonight. We have a great school committee meeting plan. So at this time, I'd actually like to turn it over to our superintendent, uh, Ms. Chris Malone, for our recognition this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, our first recognition actually is a two-part recognition. Um, and at this time, I'd like uh, Ms. Karen Baker, Brian, Ms. Vogel to please uh, come up here and assist me just a little bit. But the first part of this recognition has to do with some partnerships in the district, and particularly in Tuxedo Middle High School. I like uh, Ms. Vogel and uh, Ms. Baker, Brian, to be joined by Ms. Beatrice Sierra from the Youth Employment Services and the Greater Lowell Workforce Department Board, and with Jessica Fabiano from the Senior Program Manager at Philly Town Program at Dermot Fisher Scientific. And uh, we're so proud and happy to have both of these individuals here because they've been a tremendous support to some of our more extensive student achievement and opportunities in the community and in the workforce. And Ms. Baker O'Brien, can you talk maybe a little bit more about this partnership? So um, this spring, the Department of Education uh, gave a call to Tuxedo Memorial High School in regards to the connecting activities and the initiative for STEM internships for students. And they connected us with Jessica Therm Thermal Fisher and along with Beatrice and to get students. So what we did is we opened it up to all junior students um, and in an effort to prepare the students if they were interested in doing the internships. Um, Thermal Fisher coordinated with the guidance department to offer a resume writing workshop that allowed the students to kind of highlight aspects of their resume, their skills, and their um, education that would best suit them for this potential internship. From there, we offered with the Great Little Workforce Board a job skills workshop where Beatrice brought in two human resource managers from area um, companies, one being World General and the other being the Park Service, to talk to students about the do's and don'ts of the interview process and how best to prepare for that process in addition <coughs> to what to do within a workplace setting. So um, they were able to kind of help our students prepare for the process and the interviews that would come later after the applications were made available to the students. Um, in addition to that, Beatrice has been uh, working with our school system since 2013, and they provide, um, annually they do a job skills workshop. She comes in by monthly. Um, and one thing I think should be noted because it's above and beyond what her normal call of duty would be is last year she did recognize that there was a student that was looking for a job who his age was quite limited in the jobs that he could get. But she got to know the student and know the, knew that the family was in need, that she hit the ground and the pavement knocking on doors trying to get him a job, but also providing Christmas for this family. So 
So, it, you know, she just goes above and beyond. So we're very pleased with the patent mm -hmm. share. And Madam Chair, we have uh, two certificates of appreciation. We have uh, Ms. Baker O'Brien as well to present. Uh, on behalf of the school district for their terrific work and their partnership with the school district is very much appreciated. Yay. And Madam Chair, the second half of this uh, uh, recognition, uh, you're going to find out why we're so thankful for this partnership and thankful for, for Beatrice and Jessica because you're going to see some products of their work. At this time, um, I would like uh, Ms. Catherine Butler, Ms. Felicia Ruguji, and Ms. Stephanie Tam to please come on up and join uh, Ms. Baker O'Brien and Ms. Vogel. And Madam Chair, uh, these are three outstanding students who participated in this part partnership uh, with Thermo Fisher. And Ms. Baker O'Brien would like to talk a little bit about them, and I think we want to hear a little bit from the students on the project. So all three students were brought in, they had the opportunity to meet with the Thermo Fisher staff, and in doing so, the Thermo Fisher staff identified areas within their company that they either saw needed for improvement or was somewhat problematic. And so given that task, the students had to hit the ground running, kind of get to know the facility, what the needs were, and then come up with possible solutions. And I, I had the opportunity along with Chrissy and Brenda and Jason and Kristen to attend their presentation, a culminating presentation. And I have to say, all three girls, when they presented, their presentations were remarkable. They were highly professional, extremely articulate. I've never been so proud to, uh, to work with these young ladies and see what their work was. It was astounding. So I'm going to turn it over to you to just do a brief summary, because I know you guys could talk for a little bit on it. <laughs> a brief summary of what you did. All right, so me and, yeah, me and Felicia were partnered together with um, the environmental health safety team, and we created some ideas for a visual safety project, mm -hmm. which Yes, yeah. yeah. so the first one, yeah, we had two different projects. The first one was a visual safety project, which we had to identify different areas of the facility, which needed more um, visual safety tools, because there's lots of physical and chemical hazards, because there's lo lots of manufacturing areas and laboratory areas, so we needed to kind of up the safety in that um, part of the facility. And then the second part of our project was a dosimetry project, which has to do with radiation protection. So we analyzed the dosimetry data, which is just how much of a radiation dosage that the employees had got at the facility, and we condensed that report into a one-page report so um, the employees could see what their radiation dosages were and know that they were safe while they were working in the facility. Awesome. All right, so I had a solo project, and I worked with Dr. Eric Martin on semiconductors. So there's a lot of semiconductor machinery, and there were a lot of clean rooms where they work and manufacture semiconductor products. So since those machinery so those pieces of machinery are really difficult to find in the facility, especially after a transfer. I was responsible for going into the clean rooms, taking note of their location, their purpose, and mapping them out for the company, while in return, my manager taught me how all of them worked, what was their function, what was their significance, and exactly the science behind it. And that was a novelty, being able to actually apply exactly the science that we learn in school to the job outside of school. And, you know, taking AP chemistry with these wonderful people, it was amazing <laughs> seeing how that actually works out in, like, these fancy acronym machines, like PECVD <coughs> is a plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition machine. And so after that, I got to run some battery test summaries for Thermo Fisher, and we got to work in a business environment, which is also an extraordinary novelty. Mm -hmm. And we even got to work on some team projects, like our STEM design challenge. So all of us kind of gained our individual experiences and how it feels to work in a community that is so, put so much emphasis on teamwork rather than individual mindset. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. This is truly an honor. When members of the school committee come up here, especially when the students involved, and we need these resolutions of recognition. It, it shows the hard work that all our students are doing, especially you know, from our students, our teachers, our administrators, and everything else. It really is props to stand up here before you, and especially you know the teamwork working with our partners like the 
Jim and Fisher. So I think it's, it's just a great day. So I have three recognitions, but instead of reading all three, because they're all the exact same, <laughs> I'm only going to read one, but it's for all three. Okay? So this is a resolution of recognition. Catherine Butler, Stephanie Tam, and Felicia Raguchi. Catherine Butler is an exemplary senior student at Tewksbury Memorial High School. And based on Catherine's superior academics and leadership qualities, she was selected for a STEM inter internship at Thermo Fisher Scientific. And Catherine was one of three students selected from the 2018 graduating class at Tewksbury Memorial High School. And Catherine's culminating presentation demonstrated her outstanding problem-solving skills, creative thinking, <coughs> independent learning capabilities, and public speaking skills. And Catherine has brought great pride, recognition, enthusiasm, and honor to herself, to her parents, family, and to Tewksbury Memorial High School, and to the town of Tewksbury. Now therefore, let it be resolved that the Tewksbury School Committee applauds, honors, and recognizes the many achievements of Catherine Butler, Stephanie Tam, and Felicia Lugucci. No, we'd like you in that. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> that was trying to sit out. <laughs> All right. Ready? Go ahead. One, two, three. Let's take another one. Great. Thank you. And then I would just like to add before you leave, um, just on behalf of the school committee, how proud we are with the partnership with General Fisher and then also all the hard work that you do for our students. Um, I was one of the lucky fortunate ones that got to go and see the presentations and I was just blown away at the intellectual ability of our students. Like it just far exceeded what you may have thought, the challenges that they were given and, and what they put the resolutions and how they presented themselves. And they actually were against other peers, right? Other students from across Massachusetts. And it was so nice to sit there and go, we're doing great things here at Tewksbury High. Look at this wonderful um, accomplishment of these three students. And the presentations were out of this world. Like, hit home. And I went home and I was like, you wouldn't believe what I just saw. And I can't believe they're only going to the senior year. And I was so impressed with the hard work that you did to give up your summer, like summer your summer, to really do that and really be catalyst for, um, it was really a pilot, right? So, and, we, and I've been yes. told, Mr. Picker Brian, we're going to be invited back, and it's because of yes. you three and the fine example you set and how you represented Tewksbury. So, to you and your families, because you know I'm sure they were part in getting you there and really promoting this um, internship. Thank you so so much. I, we can't thank you enough. You really led the way for Tewksbury, so thank you. Uh, I'd like to have uh, Mr. Stonaway please come up and join us, and we're, and we're, we're here to talk a little bit about uh, this leg bolt. I'd like Ms. Charity Leg Bolt to please come up with this, Mr. Stonaway. And um, you are going to hear a little bit further in a presentation today about some of our STEAM work in the district um, from Mr. Jason Stamp, but this is a perfect example of some of the work we're doing in the district and really moving in an area where we have teacher leaders in the district who take on responsibilities designed not only to teach our students, but help teach our teachers and bring in opportunities that beforehand we would not have the ability to do. And I think through the work of Mr. Castanaway and some others, we've been able to establish some STEAM labs in the district. And I think that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. But it requires a significant amount of dedication. And I can remember being in the STEAM lab as was being constructed in the heat of the summer uh, with Charity as she was directing some of the work, which was actually being done by the uh, Middlesex Sheriff's Department. It wasn't the sheriffs doing the work, it was others. Um, but it's that level of work and care to come in and watch that constructed and, and, and do that that makes a huge difference in the instruction for our students. But, but Mr. Castano, maybe you can talk a little bit more specifically about what's going on with your training. Yeah, it feels, feels great to be here and to honor um, 
one of our dedicated educators. Um, the Trayan had had a vision uh, last spring to, to try and implement more STEM. Um, and with that, uh, and we'll talk more about that in the presentation this evening, um, that required one of our positions to get or to be changed. So I remember calling uh, Charity in in the springtime and said, you know what, this is what we're thinking, <laughs> changing from writing a writing class to a STEM class. Her jaw hit the floor. <laughs> Um, and she looked at me and there were some crickets um, and then I just said what do you what do you think and she said whatever you need me to do and um, with that it it took off really and you know the the summer can be a lonely place for us principals uh, at the elementary level um, but it wasn't as lonely this summer because uh, charity was there the majority of the summer um, as Mr. Malone said, working in the, the STEM lab, the STEAM lab, um, really, you know, coming to me almost a, on a daily basis. I found this. What do you think about that? Um, I, I learned about this. I went to this workshop. I went and um, saw this cool thing that I want to bring in. And, you know, I, I could go on and on and on. And, and you know, the, the Trahan and the North Street schools, um, we're just so, so psyched to have charity at the helm. Um, with this new endeavor, and she really has gone above and beyond, uh, spending countless days during the summer again, weekends, uh, evenings at the school, just to make sure um, that the implementation um, went smoothly, and, and boy, has it ever, and we'll talk more about that during our presentation, but, you know, very, very, very um, excited and happy to be here tonight um, to recognize Charity as she truly is. Uh, one of one of Tuxbury's finest. So thank you. Thank you. I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, glad your family's here to witness all this. I, well, I'm glad they're still with me. <laughs> I've, been, I've been missing in action a lot, and now they can see why. Um, but I, I didn't do this alone by any means. I need to thank Matt and the school council and the PAC and the parents and my colleagues in three buildings. Um, who've all really kept me sane and coming through all of this. And I can't wait to share more about it later because you thought I was passionate. Those of you who knew me as a writer thought I was passionate about writing. This just is amazing. It really is. So, on behalf of the school committee, I get the privilege of reading this to you. But before I do, this is, I love this stuff. I can't wait to see it tomorrow in action, is what I'm looking forward to. And STEAM, for me, is near and dear to my heart, being an engineer. I think it starts when the kids are young. So I'm really, really glad that you're embracing it at that lower level. And I'm sure that you'll know science by the time they get here. We're going to have to add more classes, I think. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I'm sure it will happen. So let me just read this. Whereas Charity Lepko is a dedicated and creative cre educator at the Trahan and North Street Elementary Schools, who brings 21st century learning to the students of Tewksbury. And whereas Charity Ludfield has taught the new STEAM class for third and fourth grade students while giving her utmost commitment for quality instruction to her students with this new implementation, and Charity Ludfield has gone above and beyond expectations, spending countless hours last spring during the summer this fall preparing herself for her new endeavor. And whereas Charity exemplifies the qualities inherent of a progressive educator, and whereas Charity has brought great pride, recognition, and honors to herself, to our STEAM classes, and to the town of Tewksbury. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Tewksbury School Committee applauds, honors, and recognizes the many efforts of Charity Thank you, everyone. I guess one thing. So, um, Chair, you talked about it's amazing. We think you're amazing. We need to have the level of commitment and dedication to our schools and to our students, and to have that time away from your family, really, to help us get this up and running. That's truly amazing. So, thank you for being amazing. And before you go, we're going to have your family come up. Oh. We're going to have the newspaper come over. We're going to take a nice picture because they should be in the picture, too, right? So, okay. Come on up. Jason.
year um, so they haven't changed they are the same I've actually done a little bit on top of the priorities the back to the reason for uh, focusing in on the math uh, and the sciences because to this point we haven't had a math or science coordinator for the district we've had we have a math and science uh, department here at the high school that's able to align that curriculum 
the gap has been throughout the rest of the district um, aligning curriculum. So I've been um, sort of filling that gap. Also, the technology uh, use in the district. We have a, a great technology um, infrastructure in this district, and we have a team that supports that. Uh, but the gap has been the um, sort of the integration of that technology into the classroom on the users end. Uh, we've, we've now started introducing uh, technology integration specialists who can work with the teachers and to find the, the, uh, the most appropriate technologies uh, to be used in the classroom the best way they can for the kids. Um, so I've been looking at, uh, we did an evaluation of our current system, which um, good news is it's in a really good shape. Um, but we also, I also did sort of an evaluation of uh, the devices we're using, how we're using them, um, and um, how to support our staff in, in using them better. Um, so, um, just kind of speaking on the things that I've done for each one of those priorities. Um, you know, initially you come into a new role, you need to get uh, sort of a lay of the land. So I did that. I met with all the stakeholders, uh, all the important people, uh, all the people I can get my information from. Um, <clears throat> I participated in. Um, so previous to me starting, um, uh, Brenda was a part of, a, and actually was a founder of a part founder of a, a uh, cross district science mapping uh, cohort. So that's a, a group of schools throughout the, the state uh, that got together and are creating units, uh, standardized units for K through 12 science. Um, so huge initiative, lots of work. It's been going on for up, uh, I think we're on year three, year three. So this was the first year we started implementing those units. Um, so I was able to participate in that this summer. Uh, really, really interesting. Uh, it was an unbelievable amount of work that was done. Um, so I've been working now uh, helping the teachers start to use those units and figure out how they work in our system and the curriculum that we have in place. Um, so that was, that, that was kind of a big, a big to do. Um, also, I've, we purchased a lot of new resources that, so we got a new uh, series of Go Math, for instance, and along with that came a lot of new online resources. So I've been working diligently with the uh, math coaches that we have to help the, the staff. Um, so I attended um, training uh, on how the, those resources worked, and we've been, and the, also the staff did as well, but then on top of that we've been pushing in uh, PD to the staff during their um, common planning time uh, to help them um, use those resources and understand how they work and how they can work best uh, in the class. Um, the other thing that I've done too is I uh, joined a DESE cohort on math sequencing. Uh, so that's a cohort where a number of districts um, and also um, there's um, members from higher ed. There was a member uh, from Salem State University um, so it's K all the way up through uh, the university. Uh, talking about um, math sequencing, um, brainstorming ways to uh, find um, sort of pathways for um, students that um, may need more enrichment um, and more accelerated uh, pathways, and then also uh, ways to uh, put in interventions for students that uh, may fall through the cracks. So. Um, so, so the results from that, um, we have a math, um, we call them PLCs, professional learning communities. Uh, we have a math PLC um, that we started. Uh, they, they had one last year. We focused it a little bit more this year. We set goals. Um, and the goal this year is we looked at the uh, MCAS results from last year. We found um, that one of the standards in need were uh, related to geometry. So uh, the focus this year is to develop um, Lessons, interventions uh, to help kids with their um, their skills in geometry. Uh, a lot, a lot of math talks, a lot of um, hands-on manipulatives, and uh, so that team is developing those. And then we got to come up with a plan and, and figure out how to push that out to the rest of the district. Uh, really, really great staff. I was, I, it's it was it's been really exciting for me to see what else is going on in the district because I've been living at the high school for the last uh, 12 years. Um, so it was amazing for me to see the number of amazing teachers that we have in this district uh, and the commitment they, they put into their teaching. Um, also, we, um, we've been doing, uh, we do math benchmarks. We do benchmarks for all our uh, subject areas to, to assess where students are, where, uh, where growth, where, you know, where the growth is and um, where we need to focus. 
This was the first year that we administered one of the benchmarks online using our, our one of our new resources that went with the Go Math. So um, we spent a lot of time supporting our staff. We had 75 staff um, administer the benchmark. There were only, I think, 10 that did not choose to administer it online. Um, and I think those 10 are probably gonna, we do a benchmark in the beginning of the year, middle of the year, and the end of the year. Um, uh, and the feedback I got was that it was a lot easier than they thought. You know, a lot of times it's the beginning of the year, a lot of stuff happening, do I wanna try something new? I, get, I know how to do it the other way. Um, but they found that it was much easier to do it online than it was on paper, so. Um, plus the, the, the amount of data that you get and the amount of information you get from doing it online um, is just super powerful. <clears throat> also, um, with the cross-district science mapping, those lessons and units were developed using the UBD model, which is Understanding by Design. Um, so we've been working with teachers in um, unpacking those units and, work, and walking through the, that, that design model. It's a little different than the previous model we were using. So our state of technology, um, so I've met with all the department members, I met with our technology team, uh, I actually uh, con we contracted with a company to do a uh, full technology audit, which was amazing. We came through, they tested, it, you know, super nuts the whole system. Also, uh, talked to all of our staff to see, um, you know, if there was any needs or any gaps um, that we needed to fill. Um, then I met with all the stakeholders. We developed the plan. So based on that, um, we proposed to add an additional technician to address a gap in our support. Um, we got approved funding for that in the October town meeting, which was awesome. Um, also, we contracted uh, one of the big um, one of the big things for me being here at the high school when we rolled out the iPad initiative was managing those iPads. It was just really difficult to do. Um, tried it a bunch of different ways. Um, it's just a bear. I've talked to tech departments in all different districts, and they it's the same thing. They all have that. How do we manage all these devices? Um, kids can, they do, they can go into settings and mess them up and all of a sudden you lose apps and the thing won't turn on and it's a, it's a nightmare. So we contracted with a company after reaching out to other districts, see what people are doing, I contracted with a company called Jamf um, and they provide mobile device management system which basically what it is is that you, um, we have a, a centralized person who has a, a console that they use to manage all the devices and it all happens wirelessly. So if we need to update a device, they just can find that device on a system, hit a button, and it updates the device. Um, if a principal decides that you know this classroom needs this app, they send an email to this person, I approve that this app needs to go on these devices in this classroom, they push the button, next time those things get charged, those apps get put on on that. Um, if there's ever an iPad that goes missing, we can track it down. Um, so, you know, it's, there's, a, there's a subscription to it, um, it's minimal, but it's, you know, it's well worth the money. Also, um, the TSS process, TSS is our, um, sort of our, if, if something gets broken, you need to report, you know, you, I, I can't print, or my keyboard died, or my monitor doesn't work, stuff like that, we, we call it the TSS process. I don't know what TSS stands for. Tuxbury something. I don't know. I tried to. I, I got some feedback that I had a lot of acronyms, so I was trying to fix them all before. I, did. I, couldn't, I couldn't fix that one. Um, so anyway, um, we made changes to the process because uh, the feedback that I received after reaching out to principals and staff was that they would uh, submit a, a report, a technician's um, a request for a technician, and the only, re the only way they knew that they were getting help was when the technician showed up. So there was a little quick fix to that to just improve the communication, so we need, uh, which is actually that little small fix, I've gotten a lot of feedback that things are going much better, which they're not really, there's not many things that change except for the fact that they're now getting feedback that yes, we heard you and we're coming. <clears throat> Um, as far as the implementation, uh, implementation of the technology, um, again, met with all the stakeholders to get a sense of what we need. Um, talked to, we actually uh, were able to purchase um, a lot of new devices that you heard of over the summer. So before we did that though, well as we were doing that, we, I had a sense of what the need was in the district. Um, 
and, and also along the way, and since we've done that, I've been going to a lot of conferences and, and, and um, going to uh, the MassQ down in Gillette, um, where it's just, there's just technology where it's walk around and like, oh yeah, we want that, oh that, that would be amazing if we could do that. So, uh, and also, yes, just yesterday I attended the STEM Summit down in uh, Worcester, the DCU Center. Uh, same thing. So, um, be having the opportunity to do that um, and bringing all that information back to the district and, and talking with principals and seeing where we could fit certain things. I mean, you get excited and then you come to realize, well, what's the reality? Can we actually use all these things now? You know, but what, what could we use and what would fit well in our district? Um, so, based on all those things, um, I propose to add a tech integration specialist, um, and we we actually got, got the funding for that also at the October uh, town meeting, and we've actually um, offered the position to a person, so we're hoping that person can start uh, in, at the start of second semester. Um, the role for that person would be to support um, K through K through 12, but probably more of a focus K through 6, um, and being in and out of schools and helping them a lot with a lot of the new resources, and then eventually moving uh, and, and focusing at the higher levels. Um, but the, the need is, is K-6. Um, helped with the purchase of the new iPads, uh, Chromebooks, high school started to, um, we, it was amazing getting those iPads when we did back in 2010, we used them. Um, over the years we've noticed that the, the kids um, sort of preferred a laptop, something where they could type. A lot of the, the work that's done at the high school, they need a more powerful machine. Um, they use Macs down in the, the media lab, they can't use they can't use iPads to run Final Cut Pro. Um, a lot of times they're typing these long pe papers, with the kids, right? Um, <laughs> long papers that it's hard to type a long paper on, on a touch screen. Um, <clears throat> so um, we did a survey for kids uh, in our it used to be called VHS, now in the ingenuity. Uh, they're using the devices more than anybody else during the day. We um, surveyed them and asked them, gave them a bunch of different devices and said, which one do you prefer? And they chose the Chromebooks, so we purchased Chromebooks, and the feedback I've got has been uh, fantastic. They love it. The, the only negative feedback that I received was that the ones we purchased were too big, because when you put them on the desk, you don't have any room to write next to it. So uh, it's good feedback, because the next time we'll purchase small ones those kids with the, the good eyesight. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I did was I created a, an intranet site. Uh, I love websites. Created an intranet site. I can, I'll click on it and show you what it looks like. Uh, this is just for staff. So um, we have currently with two math coaches in the process of hiring a third math coach. Um, we have, we will have two integrate, tech integration specialists. Um, so for staff to be able to request them to come help in the classroom, we needed a, a means to do that. So all they have to do is click here, and they just fill out a quick form. Um, and then they, we contact them right away and say, what's the need? When do you, wanna, when do you want us to come? Let's meet ahead of time. Let's talk about it. Let's brainstorm. Um, this link is for when we push in uh, professional development. Um, one of my goals this year is to uh, set up sort of a, a plan where we have um, you know, set times where we can, we're going to be visiting schools and they know we're coming. Um, so that'll be there, it'll be a little bit more elaborate next year, it's, it's a little thin right now. Um, and then this link here brings them to tech assistance, so there's two, two things that you could ask for for tech. One is my computer's broken, I need it to be fixed, and the other one is I can't log on to something, that's an account issue, and that's two different people. Um, okay. So, oh, one thing I want to mention, a lot of the stuff um, so the way I see my role is, is bridging a gap. Um, we've had a lot of, and what I've noticed is we've had a lot of STEM happening in this district, and we've had it happening for a long time. Um, but it's been in pockets, and it hasn't really been coordinated um, uh, year to year or, di or school to school. So that's what I'm hoping to do is fill that gap. Uh, one of the, the, the prime examples of that is um, the STEAM lab that, um, they, that was created at the Trahan School. So they're going to come up and talk about that. Um, I had about this much to do with that. And the only thing I really had to do with that is that Charity, who was amazing, reached out to me almost immediately after I was hired into the new role and said, hey, I need help. We just developed this awesome thing. And we have it here at the Trahan. But I'm also at the North Street. What do I do? So I said, well, I can help with that. 
And that's all I really did, is I helped her also get the same resources that she had at the Trahan at the North Street, and, she did the, and they did the rest. So. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, bring them up, and then what, after, after I bring them up and they talk about how that happened, I'd like to show you a quick video, about three minutes, uh, on the stuff that's happening throughout the district, and then I'll wrap up. All right. Thank you, Jason. Um, so the Trahan, we're very happy to be the leaders of having a STEAM lab at the elementary level. Um, it, would def it was definitely a huge undertaking, and it couldn't have been accomplished with so many different people. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about how we got to where we are today, and then Charity's going to talk about all the amazing things that, that she's been doing in there. Um, so starting really at the beginning of, of last year, um, I started talking with, with some teachers and, you know, trying to, to get some feedback on some of their wishes for our school. And I kept hearing, you know, more, more with STEM, more with STEM, more with STEM. Um, you know, the past couple of years, the, the Tewksbury Ed Foundation's auction, you know, the, the proceeds ha um, have been going to, to STEM-related um, activities and technologies here in the district. Uh, we have new science standards um, that's been adopted by the state. Um, and, you know, ultimately, we, we want to foster a love for science at the young ages. Um, so I brought kind of that wish and that vision um, to my school council last year. And they uh, went full force with um, some research. And I do want to recognize Mrs. Highland, who's one of our third grade teachers uh, here with us tonight. She's also um, an important member of our school council. Um, so as a group, uh, we, as I said, we did a lot of research. We participated in different webinars. Um, we did uh, some site visits. Uh, we went into a few other school districts um, to see their active STEM and STEAM labs. Uh, we looked at various different, different blueprints or makeups of a typical elementary STEM lab. Um, some recommendations. Uh, MIT actually puts out a lot um, to, again, spread that down to the younger uh, children and really talk again as a school council group what we wanted in our STEAM lab and what was important to the Trahan uh, School and to Tewksbury as a district. Um, we again looked at the new um, Next Generation Science Standards, focusing a lot on the uh, technology piece and some of the enhancements or changes to the standards. Um, we, of course, talked about budgeting and some, uh, you know, possible fundraising um, that may have needed to happen, some uh, support from the community so that this would happen, and, of course, um, some collaboration with our PAC. Um, we also asked our students, you know, what, what do they want to see, and, and, you know, at the third and fourth grade level, you know, the, they have their ideas and, and they have their thoughts and they can provide some valuable input. And a lot of them talked about more projects. We want more projects in school. And, and that's something that unfortunately has you know, gone away a little bit over the last uh, few years, especially with, with the higher demands and, and the, the increased uh, amount of, of standards and, and units that our teachers need to cover. So they you know, were, were valuable in providing some information on, on uh, what what addition was needed at the, at the trade end. Um, so with that, towards the end of the school year last year, we, we figured out that um, we were able to move forward. We had some help with some members of the community. Um, some uh, of my budget I was able to, to put towards um, the STEAM lab, and then we had a great uh, $5,000 donation by our PAC. Um, which really helped. Um, so knowing that we were able to move forward, the school council continued uh, working right through June in helping me to plan, um, along with, with Mrs. Legbold. Um, I worked through the summer on scheduling how we would, uh, we would be able to, to make this work, um, talking to teachers and getting, again, some information on, on what they would like to see in our lab, and you know, I, I heard from a lot of them that you know I want to be able to take my class in there too, 
Um, so we, we worked out a schedule for that. We're still um, you know, implementing that piece. And then of course the materials. What um, would be best uh, useful for our new teacher as well as our third and fourth grade students. And Cherry will talk a little bit more about um, that. Um, as I mentioned earlier during the recognition, Mrs. Legbold again spent countless hours during the spring and summer to get ready um, for this uh, new endeavor. Um, and, you know, we, we got some input from the school community. Like I said, we um, had some businesses reach out to us. Um, we were able to, to gather some input. You know, we have some, some pretty big tech um, companies, you know, surrounding us. And, you know, they, they provided some input. Um, we were able to talk to, to them a little bit about the kinds of jobs that, that may be happening in the, the STEM world, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, um, which is great for us at the elementary level to, to find some information out about that. Um, and then again, um, through our pack, get some wishes from our parents. What would some of our parents um, like to see? And we have some amazing parents out there who, you know, who, who have STEM jobs, um, who are specialists in this area, and they provided some valuable input as well. Um, and then through collaboration at the district level um, with um, our new STEM coordinator, and then at the superintendent's office and the assistant superintendent's office, we were able to really get a, get a good handle on how we wanted to move forward and, and how it would work with uh, personnel and you know changing this position from an academic support writing position to now a STEM position. Um, and then we had some great teacher training. And again, uh, Charity will talk more about that, but um, one purchase that we, we, we made were some kits through Lego for education. And with that, we were able to bring in both uh, Trahan and North Street teachers and train them on these kits as well um, in the hopes that, you know, the, the happenings will spread beyond what's just happening in the four walls of the STEAM lab, that some of this will spread into our classrooms with, with our amazing teachers. Um, so that's kind of, you know, how we got to this point. Uh, today and um, I'm thrilled that that Mrs. Legbold and Mrs. Bliss are here and um, Mrs. Legbold's going to talk um, a little bit about what she's been doing all the amazing things that she's been doing in, in just a few short months <laughs> So when Matt came to me last spring and said really want to take your writing job and change it I thought he'd lost his mind absolutely thought he'd lost his mind and he said why don't you think about that for a couple of weeks and we'll talk again and by the time he did by the time we talked again it had changed my world I, I almost immediately was on the internet researching and discovered very quickly that while my writing classes had been headed more toward project-based learning this is kind of project-based learning on steroids um, and it's fun and it's exciting and it's near 100% engagement most of the time for the students. Behavior problems almost vanish. I mean, just, just the, the repercussions in so many different ways that I, I couldn't have predicted. Um, it's excitement all around. It's not just the students who are very upset with these half days when they don't get to come to the STEAM lab, um, but they're greeting me with hugs in the bus lines and asking what the next project will be or will we get to do this again. And we have two kinds of projects running. I have the technology with the We Do Lego Robotics. I think you'll see a sample of it later. Um, and, but also we have the makerspace component, which is more of a hands-on building with recycled materials and whatever other materials I can get my hands on, basically. Uh, the community and the parents have been wonderful with that. A uh, local quilt shop gave me fabric and buttons and all kinds of things. And, and I, I've had offers from, I'm going to meet with the library next week. I've had offers from all kinds of different places. Huge donations of Legos from families that just, their kids are older and things like that. So everybody's been very supportive. Um, Backpack Jack, that's something you'll hear a lot. Backpack Jack is a, an imaginary boy who goes on adventures with his backpack. And the students, he encounters a problem, and they have to build a project to solve his problem. 
but they're constrained so they can only use whatever's in that backpack, they beg for this. They want to be problem solvers. They want that to take that step on their own. They're starting to ask less permissions, <laughs> which is a really beautiful thing to see, that they're starting to get that independence. Um, and, and that's all through there. What we're finding is that, is, as it says up there, STEAM is not just a class, it's becoming a full building culture. And it ties in fabulously with our growth mindset in the building. Um, and they're learning the collaboration, the themes this year, collaboration and perseverance. In the future, collaboration will be the third grade theme and perseverance the fourth grade. But whereas it's all new to everybody this year, I kind of put them in together. Um, but we taught them, actually, Mr. C taught them, that collaboration means working together so everyone succeeds. I love that phrase. We repeat that phrase all the time and we use it in everything we do. And so they really are learning how to work together and communicate. They'll be presenting projects. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow night at Open House, they'll actually be showing their parents things. So they'll be presenting kind of to their families. Um, and so those are our themes, collaboration and perseverance. So I was starting to feel a little overwhelmed because everybody has fabulous ideas and they all want to collaborate with me, which is wonderful. And I thought, I can't possibly do this alone. And then I realized I didn't have to. And so I've, I've been forming what we're calling the Trahan STEAM team. And it's third and fourth grade teachers, um, specialists, occupational therapist, she's going to talk to you in a few minutes, a library volunteer. And everybody has a different piece of the puzzle. But when you put them all together, it's a full building culture. So third and fourth grade teachers, we go over the data. We, we picked out like things like geometry that Jason mentioned. Uh, we identified as, as one of the weak areas. And we're working on getting resources in the STEAM lab. And I found some fabulous projects we can do in the makerspace to address the geometry issues we were seeing. Um, and to get those teachers into the classroom to use the resources when I'm traveling, because I'm in other buildings. Um, the specialists want to collaborate and have projects go back and forth between, say, art in the lab or music in the lab. Uh, we even found a couple phys ed um, things that could cross back and forth. The library, I'm so excited about this. We have a library volunteer who wants to collaborate to help me make indoor recess steam bins. So those indoor recess days, those snowy winter days when we can't possibly go outside, there will be constructive building challenges or tasks or braiding or not tying or sign language. Something in those kits to fully engage them during those little windows of time. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, and then I saved uh, the best for last <laughs> uh, because one of the first people to jump on board and say, I want to collaborate with you was Gail Bliss, and she's going to talk to you a little bit more about that before I wrap up. Good evening. Um, I have been just very lucky to work with Charity. Um, this whole um, collaboration came out by accident, quite frankly. One of the first projects that Charity introduced to children was a Lego project that had some very complicated, very difficult pieces to handle. And when she came to me, it was like a light bulb went off for both of us. Um, it was very easy to collaborate with her and say, OK, change the position of how the kids hold things or build it up differently so that all the kids could be successful with putting the Legos together. Um, and, and from our very simple conversation, it became clear that there were many ways that occupational therapy and the STEAM lab could be meshed. Um, the other piece of that is right now I have an intern from the University of New England who has been now going into the STEAM lab to consult with charity to help with what other kinds of problems are the kids having so that all the kids can be successful. So some of the things that we've looked at are um, 
when, when the kids first come into the, the lab, they're all asked to do a brief journal, a brief summary of what they're doing. So of course, occupational therapy can help with the writing aspect, the visual and motor skills, the spatial skills, and just getting their first ideas done, I think. Um, some of the other things that we noticed is some of the kids with visual perceptual problems were having trouble going from the HP um, stream um, screen and identifying the icons that they had to find to follow the projects. So we started looking at the visual perceptual aspects of the projects and helping the kids with that and identifying what the nuances were, what the subtle changes were in the icons so they could then write their own code and do their own sequencing. So obviously, all of the fine motor skills, the visual perceptual skills, executive function skills are, are right there in all these projects. And what we found was by doing simple accommodations, simple ways of doing problem solving, all of the kids have been successful in the STEAM lab. It's been quite remarkable to see even the kid, the, any child has, has just gone in and exploded with being able to be participating and being successful. It's, it's been wonderful. So we intend to continue that collaboration. So one of the things I learned from LEGO through education is that every time we pull out those LEGOs, they're using 24 different skills in areas that I, I knew, some of them that I knew nothing about, the visual, spatial, if I knew the fine motor, that area, but so much more than that. And so this collaboration is amazing. Um, I want to wrap up by saying, I mentioned that we have an open house tomorrow night. I want to make sure everybody knows you are all invited. Um, <laughs> it's at the Trahan, in my bright green and orange room, um, from 5.30 to 7.15. We have the third grade families coming in 5.30 to 6.15, and then 6.30 to 17, we've invited our fourth grade families. If I said that time right, I don't even know. Um, <laughs> And then, Matt doesn't know this, but I've invited a couple of community resources too. Um, the librarian wants to come, children's librarian, um, and some others. So I want to make sure you know you're all welcome to that. It truly is something to see in action. Back to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I guess without further ado, watch the video. I so again, this is um, stuff, a lot of this um, started before me. So I don't, not, I don't want to take credit for things that I didn't, um, <laughs> that where I shouldn't get any credit. Um, but it, it definitely highlights uh, fantastic stuff that's happening in this district.
So I wanted to, to point out that just about all that technology you saw is brand new. So that to, it just goes to show the, you know, I'm, I'm actually thankful for the support that we get from the community, that we get from the town manager's office. It's just unbelievable that we have that much new technology in the district. About 300, 300 or so new, brand new iPads K to 2. Um, I mean, we, we had to, we purchased, I think, about seven new carts um, of um, streams at different levels, um, seven new carts of Chromebooks at the high school. This is unbelievable. Um, so again, thank you. I mean, obviously the STEAM Lab, an amazing, amazing um, program. Um, <clears throat> just to wrap up, what am I gonna do next? <laughs> Um, so continue with a lot of the great stuff that's happening, and my, my major goal is to fill the gap. Ultimately, I want to eventually move away from the math coordinator, the, the science coordinator, the technology person, and just be focused on STEM. Um, that's really, you know, I think, you know, that's my passion. That's, you know, I think where we need to be. Um, I go to all these conferences, I hear from, you know, people doing what they're doing and I just want to start having those maker spaces at all our schools and get our kids, I mean, we, our kids need to be problem solvers. This is the day, this, this is the world we live in. They need to be problem solvers. Um, so the math and the science goes with all that, but um, that's, that's where I want to end up. So again, continue to build relationships, continue to support um, the people that are doing what they're doing, um, and my ultimate goal is to fill those gaps. Um, and ultimately build a, build a curriculum of STEM in this district that's K through 12, that's standards based, that's aligned, that makes sense, um, that builds upon itself. And that's it. So first I'd like to say I think we should all stand up because I think honestly this is incredible. Yeah. What is the Everyone talks about it and they throw it out there, but to really get it up and running and to see it and have it in our schools is such an undertaking and we're going in that direction and it's very, very exciting. So I don't want to monopolize, I'm going to actually um, put it out to my colleagues first about feedback and comments on tonight's presentation, but I am like energized and I'm excited and I can't wait for someone to bump into me in Market Basket and say, did you see our presentation? If not, you better go watch it because there's continues to be such amazing things going on and this is, I mean, again, we're continuing to just get in front of everything and, and move forward and this is an area that I think you acknowledge we need to improve on, but we're going, right? We're going and I'm really excited where we're going. So at this time, I'd like to just open it up and see if any of my colleagues have any comments because I could go on and on about this. I'm so excited. Um, Mr. Sullivan? Uh, I think it's great. Um, absolutely infectious. Um, the teachers, fantastic to hear the collaboration. Um, this is a wonderful idea with the uh, STEM site for staff. Um, can't say enough good things, obviously, yet. especially ironically, something that's so technology uh, driven that it's nice to know that you know someone's right there 
whenever they need and they can reach out and get any kind of help or collaboration that they need. So um, thank you very much. Keep up the good work and hopefully we can continue to provide more resources to uh, enrich the programs that you currently have. So thank you all for your wonderful dedication and for what you do for our community. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Francis? Thank you. So I'll let this love fest continue. <laughs> um, I just think it, it's, as, uh, as Madam Chia said, we've been talking about this for a long time. And to see it actually come to fruition and to see the enthusiasm of everybody that's here tonight and, you know, and the things that's been accomplished, but more importantly, the things that we need still to do. I think it's tremendous. I think the collaboration of everybody is what really makes a program like this work especially on the uh, leadership, Jason. And I wouldn't expect anything else when you took the job. I knew you would just get in there and, and do it. And one of the things you mentioned, and as uh, Pete just mentioned also, is some of these things that we do without the help, we get support we get from the community, from our town manager, board of selectmen, and especially the town meeting, we wouldn't be able to do these things. So again, a tip of the hats to everybody who helps us support. Continue the great work and the enthusiasm it's like I think every one of us want to get in the lab and start doing it ourselves. So, nice job. You man. might show up, right? There. That's right. You might show up and do that. Thank you, Mr. Francis. Mr. Pettis. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Stamp. I do think it was great. And I think two of the things that struck me, when, uh, I think Charity said the behavioral problems just vanish and go away because they're so engaged in all that activity. And that you also, uh, everyone succeeds and you're working together in a collaboration and the kids are learning that rather than all being just an individualized effort that they can pass. But I just had a question. How often do they go to those labs, like the kids? To the STEAM lab? Yeah. That's what you said. Currently, uh, it's once a week under Charity's direction. And then classroom teachers uh, will, will have the opportunity to sign the lab out and bring their own class into the lab as well. All right. And when they bring them in, what are the, how long is it? Like an hour, half an hour? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Okay. Yeah. In my dream world, I'd get to be in one building and see everybody more than once. Thank you, Mr. Coates. Mrs. Bennett. Um, I, you know, this is what I dreamed of, I guess. Um, so you guys have done an amazing, amazing job. I can't wait to see it tomorrow night. I definitely will be there. Um, one of the key points you kind of mentioned in your pitch here is that you're going to connect the dots to real world application. I think that says it all. You know, and they're starting at third grade. So that's amazing. Um, one of the things I was going to ask you, of course, because I'm always looking ahead, what's on the horizon? I know you've been going to different sessions with different districts. What are they doing? What don't we have that you think would be the latest and greatest? Obviously, I know you want to bet stuff, but um, is there something that you could see us needing? Um, the, the thing that I, so we, I was just at the uh, STEM Summit yesterday, um, one of the things that struck me um, probably the most was, I um, can't remember the name of the district, they have a STEM, they have maker spaces in, um, at all their levels, and they have uh, a different, I took a picture of it, they have a different, um, a different platform at each level to, to fit uh, sort of the kids' developmental needs. Um, so that's kind of where I'm thinking next is how do we build these spaces, how do we build these programs below, below third grade and above third grade? Because right now it's, we have a third and fourth, we have an awesome program in third and fourth. How do I get into the Ryan? How does that work? Um, so there's a lot of planning involved, there's a lot of talking um, with Brenda and, and Chris about you know, how, does, how does that work? Is, is it, do we have to change schedules? Do we have to hire new staff? Do we, do we change programs? Like how, how does that work? Um, that's the tougher part. The easier part is the, with the people doing this stuff everywhere. So we can just start, like, what are you doing? How, how can we do this? And what, 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 um, what robots are you using at that level? And what coding are you using at this level? And that's the easy part, you know? It's, it sounds like it's the hard part, but that's the easy part. The harder part is figuring out how do we fit that into our system and make it work uh, with the restraints that we have, or the constraints that we have. Um, but that's where, I, that's where I see us going next, is how do we build this throughout? And then do it in a way that makes sense and that builds upon, so that when they're coming up to charity, they already have a base and she can extend it even further. That's, that's where I see it from next. 
I think it's really important to notice, and I think you did there, the presentation was just fantastic in showing the integration of learning. And, you know, I, I'm not sure, and Charity will agree with me, that the kids were cheering when they were going to writing before. <laughs> but now, they can write on something that was so engaging. Yeah. And they've talked about it, and they enjoyed it. They remember it. And their writing is enhanced. So what happens is, how do we build that approach into teaching and learning in science, technology, math, writing, speaking, collaborating? I mean, you see SEL all over this students and are working together. So it's really, uh, the principals have their thinking caps on because two teaching positions, um, K2 and 3-4, were repurposed to be thinking more in terms of seeing how do we do that in our other special areas. We don't want it to be standalone. We want it to really improve instruction throughout. So we, we are um, collaborating often because these are decisions that we're looking forward in 5-6 to keep that engagement thoroughly alive, so we can keep going. So I have to also say I was approached by a student that loves the STEAM Lab and mm -hmm. wanted me to come in and take a look at it as well. And he was almost indicating that he's not learning. So I think you've made it so enjoyable <laughs> that this child wants more of this class and doesn't realize what value it's adding because he's having fun learning. So thank you. I do I, thank you. I said the same thing about the writing, which I do still sneak in there, but we don't we don't call it writing. We call it brainstorming or listing our facts or like it has all these sneaky scientific names. <laughs> don't talk. I won't. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. So I guess I'll just tie it all back up. I think People don't look at when we do things and we get where we are. The master plan, I think our superintendent and our assistant superintendent, they create this great master plan, right? It's a one, two, and three tier. That really helps the school committee. We take votes and we look at vision and we plan forward. And this is how we are, where we are today. It's all that you know, planning for the future and what we need. So with that being said, what you need, and I'm sure I heard you say it would be great to be in one building, maybe you want an extra teacher or another STEM lab, but those things that you want, should go on that master plan, whether they fall under tier one, tier two, tier three. So it's nice to see how everything kind of connects in um, and really is successful. But I have to say, we can't get there unless we have the, the leadership, Jason. I think this new position, you know, we were skeptical about, you know, what are all these different positions we're adding? How's it all going to come together? Tonight's a perfect night to say, trust the system, right? Trust what the future is and the plan. And you're a perfect example. You are where you are now. So I think you have great leadership and you're going to be able to take us to the next, next level. Next level. Charity, I can't go on and on. I mean, the enthusiasm that you have and that the students are seeing you and you're in the forefront of it and that creation of the lab and really getting everyone together and collaborating and working with, obviously, Mr. Ketit, but also getting teachers and, and you know, bringing other people into the fold. This is all great stuff. This is what it's all about, you know, and this is, you know, Mrs. Bennett to say that the kids said they're not you're having fun, you know, and they don't even realize how much they're learning and they're problem solving. That's really what it's all about. So we're very, very fortunate. And again, I think my colleague said it, we couldn't do all this without the support that we get from the stakeholders that take the votes, from our town manager, Mr. Montori, from our finance committee, from our board of selectmen. I mean, it really is, this is everybody coming together, and the end result is great stuff that you showed us tonight. So we are so excited. I can't wait tomorrow night. It's gonna be fun. I feel like I give you a kid and go back to school. Um, and so it's gonna be really exciting, and I can't wait for the parents to see all the great stuff that you do. Because I think when you see it in person, you see that room, and they really get to see what their students or you know, their children are going and learning. I think it's gonna be fantastic. So um, I'm excited and thank you for a wonderful presentation. It's really great to see the stuff and how it all connects. So I didn't wanna take up too much time, but it is all about connecting it. Right? <laughs> so it's great and the vision is wonderful. So keep up the great work everyone. And please go back and tell all the people that are involved in this initiative how pleased we are, how proud we are, and that we really feel like we continue to move in the right direction here in Tewksbury and it's thanks to everybody out there. So. Thank you. Excellent presentation. Okay, we're going to move right along to Citizens Forum. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask, is there anyone out there this evening that is wishing to speak um, on anything on the agenda this evening? Okay, not seeing anyone, we're going to move right over to our clerk, Mr. Selman, to present our meeting minutes. Thank you very much. I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of October 18, 2017, 
the school committee regular meeting minutes. I'll second it. So I have a motion. I have a second on the floor this evening to approve the meeting minutes for October 18th, 2017. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. I'd now like to ask our clerk, Mr. Selma, to present our payroll. I'd also like to move the school department payroll for the pay period ending 10-19-2017 to be approved and certified in the amounts and categories as shown for a total amount of $1,299,950.57. I'll second. So I have a motion, I have a second on the floor this evening to approve the payroll period ending October 19, 2017. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. I'd also like to move the school department payroll for the pay period ending 11-2-2017 to be approved and certified in the amounts and categories as shown for a total amount of $1,298,891.76. Second. So I have a motion, I have a second on the floor to approve the payroll period ending November 2nd, 2017. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. Thank you, Mr. Selman. Moving right along, I'd like to turn over to our superintendent, Mr. Malone, to present the superintendent's staff reports this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I want to wish everyone in the community a happy uh, American Education Week. Uh, certainly, we have multiple events going on in the district this week with uh, school visitations and uh, other celebrations. And one piece we added uh, to our website was uh, presented to us by Ms. Kristen Holm and Ms. Uh, Felicia Whetstone, two of our principals, which uh, is called a Swarms. And what this is is actually an electronic newsletter that goes out. It's really being utilized by all the principals at this time. But we put one out at the district level for American Education Week, and it actually gives us data back about how many people are actually viewing that website, how long they're, not their website, but just this, this particular piece of it, how long they're on there, whether they like it or not. So it's a great way to communicate with the community and a great way to promote things like American Education Week and certainly something our principals will continue to use. It also integrates very well with our new website. Um, just a reminder to the community, and I think we'll probably hear a little bit more about this tonight, but the uh, Tuxbury Education Foundation auction is, is this Friday. But uh, just a, a, a quick note from the school side, which is, uh, in, in my uh, short time here in Tewksbury, certainly this is the crowning event in the district that really brings the community together and, and really promotes uh, all of us working together to support the students and, and, and teachers in the district. And um, it is that, that sense of community that this auction creates that certainly uh, you know, uh, is important to me as a superintendent and important in this district. Uh, we'll hear a lot about the, the money that it raises and the activities that go on at the auction. But it's really that community event that is, is so important to our kids and, and it's just, we're so appreciative of it, so thank you. Uh, also a big thank you to many of our staff members in the district. Uh, two weeks ago we had a significant power outage in the Merrimack Valley. Caused the staff to close school on uh, October 30th, Monday. Uh, through multiple uh, efforts by many staff members crossing uh, many disciplines, and not to mention the uh, Tewksbury Police Department. We were able to open school on Tuesday, October 31st. Uh, most districts in this area did not open on that day, we were not able to. Uh, significant collaboration coordination between uh, Ms. Terry Garrish, the doing school principal, and Ms. Felicia Whetstone, the Heathrow school principal, to coordinate actually combining those schools for a day. Uh, Dave Libby and Transportation organizing for eight buses to move students to and from the Heathbrook School in a safe manner. Uh, Tewksbury Police escorting us through that and giving us updates regularly on any road closures or any other issues we should have. Um, Deb Mugford organizing and reorganizing her staff to all collaborate in one school and feed almost double the amount of students in one day at one location. Uh, Primarily it was our staff who collaborated <coughs> in classrooms. The principals made a determination that educationally it was better to actually combine students in a classroom and combine teachers, which initially maybe thought might be uh, more cumbersome, but the actual educational component that took place during that day uh, was significant and it was rewarding. And uh, it's actually created some 
lasting collaboration between Dewey and Heathbrook staff. That, that's amazing. Uh, but it even goes down to our technology department, our custodians. Uh, John Marchand actually uh, went to his house, got a um, generator and his own personal hotspot, and we actually created electricity and uh, connectivity in the Heathbrook when there was no power at all in the neighborhood. So those secretaries were actually able to communicate through the phones and through email with parents in the Heathbrook while the students were actually relocated to the school. So uh, just a big thank you to all those who helped out in that. And, and it really speaks to the district's ability to collaborate, uh, to be able to move students in that manner on short notice also speaks to our emergency preparedness and uh, actually is typically one of the drills that is extensively practiced uh, as part of the district and we were able to pull it off in a real world scenario uh, with very few glitches. So thank you to the parents who were supportive of this. Uh, thank you predominantly to the, the teachers in the Heathbrook and the doing, but it took many other people to help out there. But it, it, it's a great testimony to the collaboration in the district and I, I want to make sure we're, we're thanking all those people involved. Uh, we will continue with Alice drills. We have some schedules going on. We have had some ongoing, some bigger ones that involve the Tewksbury Police and others that are going on locally at the individual schools, but those will continue on. Um, a big uh, congratulations to the uh, Tewksbury Rural High School Unified Athletics. Uh, last night, it was just a significant event that we're actually going to talk a little bit more about in a future school committee meeting, but uh, you know, we had uh, six school of the school, six total school districts here, uh, Tewksbury, Bill Rick, and North Andover, Methuen, Haven, and Andover, eight different teams, uh, two from Bill Rick and two from North Andover, and one from all the other communities, 95 athletes participating in this, uh, 18 players and partners from Tewksbury represented uh, we had some guest referees from the school committee and Mr. Sullivan and um, just a terrific, terrific event. And, and a big thank you to Mr. Aylwood, uh, who is in the midst of preparing for a Thanksgiving Day game and a continued run uh, in the state championship, who still dedicates his time to come over and coach this team. Mr. Druin, who did a significant amount of organizing and bringing in the other schools and working with that, and Ms. Vogel, who's, who's been uh, present here at the high school and making sure the facilities are up and going. Many other people involved, but uh, just a, a, a terrific event and a real hallmark uh, for, for Tewksbury Public Schools, and we're very proud of everyone involved. Um, and finally, just some scheduling reminders. Report cards will go out on uh, Friday, 11-17. And a reminder, we're heading into the Thanksgiving Day break. Uh, so that uh, on Tuesday, November 22nd, that will be an early release day for all students. And a reminder that Thursday, November 23rd, and Friday, November 24th, are no school days. With that, I'll hand it over to Ms. Reed. Thank you. Uh, the first update I have for you is in the consent agenda, and that's the, Dis the Department of Education School Climate Survey. Um, over the, I'm, I'm sure this won't come as a shock to you, but over the past 30 years, there's been a substantial amount of research that shows that a positive school climate will impact uh, positive um, student achievement. <coughs> Massachusetts uh, Department of Education is looking at the use of a school climate indicator to, to compare with school performance. Last year, in the 2017 MCAS, they piloted a school climate survey on the 5th and 8th grade science MCAS as well as on the 10th grade math MCAS. The survey was optional. You'll see, though, that about 69% of the state, I'm, I'm going to just summarize this report for you, 69% of the students in the state participated. The highest um, level of positive school climate we saw at the fifth grade and slightly decreasing as uh, students in eighth grade and tenth grade reported. Uh, the, that also parallels the optional participation where fifth grade was higher and tenth grade a little bit less. Um, what are some key findings? Uh, I think this was really positive to hear that 80% of the students who responded said always or mostly always teachers support them. Um, teachers support students who come to class upset and that students help each other learn without having to be asked by the teacher. That was really <coughs> positive to hear. 
Uh, grade five students, as I said, reported stronger school climates than in grades eight and 10 of the students who participated. Of the schools with the strongest school climate from the survey, um, student on teacher interactions are mostly respectful, caring, and collaborative within the classroom. That was wonderful to hear. Students with the weakest school climate um, did say whether they felt safe at school and that their areas to improve were in caring, respectful relationships between students and teachers. Um, what, do, what do we know by this? I don't think it's surprising. It's a, not a big aha, but it's good to see on paper through a survey that relationships matter. We say it all the time, relationships matter in teaching and learning, so we'll continue to prioritize that message equally in our teacher trainings. Once the data is available to us, we'll be sharing that data with principals and teachers so they can look at that in conjunction with their own cascade. Um, November 7th was a full day of professional development. I gave you a little preview of that at the last meeting, but let me just say that teachers, we've had very, very successful um, and positive feedback from that full day. In line with that school climate survey, grades five through eight participated in a rigor, relevance, and relationship building uh, training. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. And um, grades K through two dug very deep into their cross-district science mapping units Three through eight, as you heard today, dug even deeper into the science resources that are new to them and how they align to those new science units. The Tewksbury Memorial High School picked up their uh, training with West End, and I am very proud to tell you that NPEN served over 2,200 teachers, 32 districts, over 120 of our staff members attended um, the NPEN training. These are our lower incident role teachers where it's, it's uh, harder to put together really high quality PD for them. Uh, in their role, and Tewksbury hosted 400 teachers throughout the day. So very, very good day again. Um, we're proud of our collaborative efforts with these other districts to provide that type of PD. In your packet, you have an invitation to our second annual ELO Open House. Why is this Open House special? We have several families that we service in Tewksbury who don't speak English. Their students come to our, their children come to our school as ELO students. This is an opportunity for parents to come to an open house, have information translated, have students show off their learning. Teachers in our district that work with these students are present at this um, open house. It, we went from having very few yellow parents participate in open houses, probably out of anxiety and, and, and not knowing, and knowing they wouldn't understand, to 100% of our real life families participate. It's quite a night. If you can pop in, I know you'll be very proud of our staff, how they work with um, this population of students and families. And I know that Charity and everybody invited you to the um, STEAM Lab Open House. Just want to remind you, if you cannot come tomorrow night, there's an opportunity in the morning at 9.30 to 10.30, where you can see parents interact in the STEAM Lab with, um, with Charity and the team. Uh, mine is just a quick update on some capital projects. The boiler at the North Street has been installed. However, the company has been there for the last few days as we're having some issues with booting everything up, but we still have the old boiler that is working properly. I'm going to touch base with John tomorrow, John Marchand tomorrow, to make sure that everything is all set. I know he spent the day there today. Um, we received a quote from one of the town architects regarding the replacement of the doors at the Heathbrook and the doing schools. We're going to be going out to bid before the end of the month with that project. We already had our mandatory walkthrough on the replacement of the fire control panels for the doing in the Heathbrook, and those bids are due to come in next week. And finally, the state inspectors were here at the high school Monday to inspect the elevator that's been recently fixed. It's now up and running, so we now have the elevator access to the third floor. I'll, I'll talk about the budget when we get to that. Thanks. This is Matt. Is there a move right along to our consent agenda? Does anyone wish to take anything off the consent agenda this evening? And if not, would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to accept tonight's consent agenda. I'll second. So a motion and a second on the floor to accept tonight's consent agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. Thank you. Moving right along to community reports. Uh, we'll start with you, Mr. Francis, for the School building update. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the following is a brief update since our last presentation at our last school committee meeting. 
The building committee and the owner project manager have met several times to discuss the project in terms of design selection, project scope, and potential site selection. Options should a new school become a preferred solution. Members of the design and selection subcommittee and the OPM have also met several other times to discuss the following. Finalizing the design and selection request for services, the receipt of design and submission packages on October 31st, review and discuss the submitted design and submissions, and prepare for the MSBA design and selection panel next Tuesday, November 21st. In terms of the design and selection request for services and design and submissions, here are a few statistics. The RFS requests distributed were 37. Requests that were architects were 18. And the number of architects that actually submitted were five. The following five designers submitted in alphabetical order. DRA, that's Drummy, Roseanne, and Anderson. Flansburg, Habib and Associates. JCJ, JCJ, and SMMA. The designer selection now moves to the MSBA designer selection panel, as I stated, this Tuesday, November 21st. And if necessary, a second meeting on either December 5th or 12th will come up with our architect. No later than December 12th will the designer be selected for the Tewksbury Elementary School project. The building committee members and the OPM have conducted walkthrough tours recently of completed elementary schools of comparable size and scope of our potential school project for uh, of our potential school project. We visited the Hill School in Revere and recently the Woodland School in Milford and currently we are setting up a day to, in, to uh, tour the Bresnahan School in New Rico. Our next building committee meeting is scheduled for either 1128 or 1214 at 6 p.m. in the town hall, depending on the outcome of the MSBA meetings. And at that night, we'll have our architect hopefully on board. We continue to look forward to providing monthly updates through the process. And I'm really looking forward to next Tuesday to see how the process works at the uh, MSBA. We'll have the three people representing uh, the elementary school building committee, be Superintendent Malone, Assistant Superintendent Regan, and myself. So it should be an interesting morning uh, next Tuesday. And that's my report. Thank you, Mr. Francis. That's wonderful. Great news. Just the, yeah, just the uh, architects that have submitted uh, on the whole excellent. So we're going to be in very good shape. Anyone in that we have in that case. And hopefully it will be Tuesday. Thank you, Mr. Carlos. And moving on to the Tooks for Education Foundation, Mrs. Bennett. Um, no surprise here that I'll be talking about the big TEF auction, school auction, that's coming up this Friday at 7 p.m. at the Tewksbury Country Club. There are hundreds of um, items to bid on, um, both silent, live. We have a raffle room filled with great things. Um, so I encourage every parent, community member out there to come join us. You can still buy tickets at the door for $25. Um, again, this is an adults-only event, but we do welcome you to come in. We are raising money for 21st century learning tools for all our students in all the schools of Tewksbury. Um, so hopefully we'll see everyone there. Um, I will also plug in before our next school committee meeting, we'll have a Barnes & Nobles TEF event. That is December 2nd at the Burlington Barnes and Nobles. Um, information will be some, um, going out to all the parents. And it's a great day to come by, shop, buy some books. There's even a discount for some of the staff if you're in education. Um, I believe it's about 20% you get off. Um, and also there's funds raised for the TEF. A portion of your proceeds goes to us as well. Um, and I know there'll be artwork. Um, there will be principals reading to the children at different times. Um, a full agenda will be coming up soon. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Mrs. Bennett. And I would like to say absolutely do not miss the big event. I think Mrs. Bennett did a great job. Mr. Malone did a great job. We are so lucky and fortunate in this community to get the support that we get for our schools. But it's a great way to see everybody come together on Friday night. Um, there's a lot of people that work very, very hard in this event. And it's always a good time. And actually, I do a lot of holiday shopping, too. There's a lot of great things. You can do some of your holiday shopping, too. So don't miss out. We hope to see everybody on Friday night. 
Okay, moving right over to you, Mrs. Bennett, for our policies this evening. Okay, thank you. Um, we have 27 policies here. Um, again, these are policies that were recommended to be revised as a result of legal changes, changes in practice, or updating of the language to reflect modern needs. And this is our first reading, um, so no vote is required again this tonight. Um, next school committee, however, this will that will be the second reading and final. Um, the policies are DGA authorized signatures, DJE procurement requirement, DK payment procedures, DKC expense reimbursement, EB safety programs, EBAB pest management policy, EBB first aid, EBC emergency plan, EC building and grounds management, ECA building and ground security, EDC authorized use of school owned material, EEAA walkers and riders, EEAEA bus drivers examination and training, EEAEA dash one, drug and alcohol testing for school bus and commercial vehicle drivers, EFC free and reduced price food services, FA facilities development goal, FF naming facilities, FFA memorials, GBA equal employment opportunity, EBEA staff ethics, EBEB staff conduct, EBED staff tobacco, GBGB staff personal security, GBGE domestic violence leave, GBGF family and medical leave, GBI staff participation in political activities, GBK staff complaints and grievances, GCBA professional staff salary schedule. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. And um, I think I'm getting old in my glasses. I actually missed the top of it, so I, excuse me. I'm going to go back to Mr. Sullivan for an update on the Wellness Committee. It was yeah. on the second page, and I didn't see it. So, uh, Mr. Sullivan. No problem, Madam Chair. Uh, the only update actually is our next meeting is uh, Monday, November 1. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Okay, moving right along to old business. <coughs> Madam Chair, just on the uh, Next Generation cast update, uh, our last meeting we spent quite a bit of time talking a little bit about some of the results and the changing in the testing and certainly trying to help parents uh, kind of understand the, the changing system. And uh, it was interesting because more recently since that time, the acting commissioner, Mr. Joe Wilson uh, of Education, came out with a statement that pretty much summarizes what we said and I'd just like to read it to you. Performance did not decline, rather the bar has been significantly raised. And I think that does sum up the transitional spot we're in right now in looking at this data. And Ms. Regan's going to talk a little bit about, uh, we've talked about the impact of moving into next generation impasse. We're going to talk a little bit right now about the impact that's going to have on high school students. Thank you. Um, we have two most recent communications we have from the department. I'm going to start with next generation impasse high school testing. This really reiterates some of the information that I gave you at the last report, but also clarifies a little bit more because we keep wondering how does this impact our high school students. I'm not going to go through the whole report, but take you to some uh, particular slides. And the first slide I'd like you to go to is page four. Um, as a reminder, our next year's MCAS testing for students entering grade um, 10 will be the next generation test in ELA and math. This year, our students in grade 9 will be the first to take the, um, you'll see in a little bit when I go over the science standards, it'll be a blend of the new and former science standards from the legacy science, and it'll be a computer-based test. So just as a reminder, it's next school year, 2019, where the next generation test will come into play for grade 10. Um, on the next slide, on slide five, you can see that the interim standard, much like we saw this year, will take some time. So even though they'll take that test in 2019, it won't be till the summer of 19 where that standard setting will take place again. 
you'll see a little bit of a prediction as to where they expect that standard to be. Um, you, this current standard is that 240 is the mark for proficient and 220 is the mark for needs improvement. Students that are, who um, land in needs improvement in grade 9 or 10 <coughs> MCAS um, land on what we call an EPP. It's a plan to help them succeed so that they can continue to test and succeed and graduate. The interim standard will come, will, um, what we've been told has been put in print yet, will include, so we'll have exceeding expectations meeting and partially, that partially meeting will be, will be taken into account much like the needed improvement um, achievement level was. Okay, if we look at slide six, this is really, uh, again, a deja vu of what we saw in grades three through eight next generation MCAS. Currently, if you look at MCAS grade 10, that bar, you see that roughly 92% of students are landing in proficient and advanced. What, we, uh, what they're predicting as an F4th percentile linking would be that 50% of our students would be that bar is, is, has risen, that's what we're seeing. 50% of our students would be in that meeting and exceeding. And then uh, below that 50% mark will be in partial meeting with um, then that not meeting. Okay. This is a prediction of that equipercentile linking model. If we move to slide eight. Oh, let me just go backwards again as a reminder. Even though we have 50% at meeting and exceeding, that partially meeting for two years will satisfy competency determination. And there'll be that standard setting throughout that time to determine how we support students who are not partially meeting. Uh, again, going on to slide eight, there's that calendar. And if you look at uh, the 2018-19 column in class of 2021, in 18-19 or next year, spring of 19, that, uh, the school year 19, that'll be our grade 10 students. That's what that asterisk means, that first grade level who will perform in that interim new competency determination requirement under next generation MCAS. So this reiterates really what we had spelled out in more detail um, for us. If we go to slide 10, this year we'll be field testing some of those new next generation MCAS questions. It will be required for students in grade 10 who are selected. Not quite clear if that selection is going to be from us or from DESE at this point. What we do know is it will be a computer-based testing experience and that at least 25% of our students in grade 10 will be participating in that pilot. Um, all high schools, every district will have either be selected for ELA or MAP. And um, more information on accommodations and the administration of that test will follow. I think if you remember I told you that we were promised it would not disrupt the current legacy MCAS testing for grades 10 uh, or 9, and it would come after that was complete. So um, what we also know is in that spring of 18, again, this spring, and spring, it goes through our school <coughs> year, there'll be a voluntary tryout for the next generation biology and introductory physics who participate in biology. So once again, our goal is to keep you in the conversation with us as we continue to get new information from Desi and hopes to um, help us in our planning to prepare our staff and students. Do you have any questions on this presentation before I move on to the next one? I think we're all set. I think we, we all realize we continue to evolve. We just gotta, it's great to keep, keep, keep us updated, so I appreciate that. Um, the next presentation um, is regarding our science. It's called the STE, MCAS Science, Technology, and Engineering MCAS Update. Uh, again, this updates and clarifies some of that timeline. I'm going to lead you right to slide three. You can see that in the past nine years, our statewide science MCAS results have um, incrementally increased steadily for, grade, for the high school STE MCAS and then plateaued or slightly begin to decline in our grade five and eight uh, science and test tests. This shows us that we need an update to our assessment that meets the current standards. If we move to... Mr. Regan, I have a quick question. Sure. I mean, it always comes up from time to time, I think with all of us, I, you know, we've had several conversations about this, but how, how do you think the results may differ now with our new schedule? So, you know, we were getting biology for 
you know, so now with the new scheduling, I'm just saying it'd be interesting to follow that moving forward to see now that we've changed to a waterfall schedule, if our results go up, you know, decrease or increase based on that. I would love to follow that okay. for future updates. Just, sure. just throwing it out there. Right. And we've all talked about it. And what we've seen, too, is that even though the standards, so what we have are the um, prior standards and the legacy MCAS, mm -hmm. the melding of the new standards in the legacy MCAS, and then it'll be a whole new MCAS. So it'll be a little hard to constantly track because it won't be the same. Throughout our schedule change, standards change, and the test slightly is out of the change. However, we've held steady with our science results, which is, which is, in my opinion, a good prediction of how we're going to continue to go. Um, in our fifth and eighth grade results, started to be uh, either stayed steady or declined, as did the state. So the shift is. Um, very relevant at this time for those um, lower grade levels. Mrs. Ben has a question. Well, well, I think you answered it. So our trends are the same yes. trends as we've seen in the state. Very parallel okay. to the state the results. Um, the next slide, I just wanted to point out that most districts, you can see from 2008 and into uh, today, participate in the biology and gas. And so we're right along um, course with most of the districts in our state. I'm going to take you right to slide six. Because this is what's important in that timeline. For 2018, which is this year's MCAS, as I said, there'll be overlapping standards from the old science standards and the next generation science standards. So when they say old and new, they're talking about the prior science standards and then the new ones we're um, um, using currently now in the class. And that's really important because teachers ask that question all the time. Standards are what we're teaching. It, it's the content, knowledge, and the, and the practice that teachers are teaching. Should we teach to the standards we had before or to the standards that we are using now? Um, and and this, is, this is that transition point. You know, how they can't do everything. They can't do all the old standards and all the new standards. So that's always that uh, conversation that we have to have with our teachers. And the state continues to give us some guidance in that, which comes a little bit further on in the slides. What we do know is this year is a computer-based test. And that next year in 2019, this test is the new one. It will be based on the new next generation standards. It is now, um, there will be uh, indicators that identify, was this a third grade standard, a fourth grade standard, or a fifth grade standard? If you remember, a big shift in the new standards were in Massachusetts. There are a list of standards for every grade level now as opposed to, used to be, here are the science standards for K through two. So when you talk that throughout that time was um, a judgment at, at the district level. Here are the standards for grades three through five. So what we saw were not a lot of K through four um, classrooms were really held as accountable to those standards. It really felt on the shoulders of grade five um, uh, considerably. And, and similarly in grade six through eight, it was a grade band test. It was an eighth grade test. We're gonna still see that but we'll know where those standards were in what grade level and where we need to adjust our grade level of science um, instruction. As I said, it will take some time for those, stand those uh, standards to be set for achievement. If we look at the next slide, slide seven, it won't be until 2020 where we'll see the new test for biology. And this is important because, again, that's a uh, competency determination for graduation. And as the department states, there'll still be more decisions to be made regarding uh, the standard setting for that uh, science competency determination for graduates in 2022 and 2023. The next few slides are really more helpful for us um, in curriculum instruction, and, and they really focus on test development. They call blueprints and types, item types. Uh, we share this presentation in our, on our professional development day with grades three through 12. This was part of their uh, training on that day was to get to understand where will the majority or the percentage of questions be located in which science domain. You can see that there are the four domains, earth and space, life, physical, technology, and engineering. Um, you'll be pleased, on, I'm not gonna go into it too much, but on slide 10, practices, those engineering and problem solving practices we will see be scored now on our new next generation science MCAS test. What does that mean? We're in the planning stages now of 
many more STEAM experiences like we've heard where the practice is most important. Content knowledge dissipates. That's not what we want students to leave every grade level remembering every vocabulary word, but that engineering practice, that applied problem solving practice, that they take a, that approach uh, spans every content area. So that they'll see, we'll see that in the next generation MCAS test. And then varying item types, um, and if you go to slide 13, the, the star I really highlighted here is that those practice tests with utilizing technology will be available, they say, this November. Our teachers are anxiously waiting for those tools. Um, those types of practice tests on slide 14 talk about those interactive types of questions, dragging and dropping, interactive graphs, hotspots, uh, things our teachers and students need to learn to use together. And then um, finally, we know that there was a tryout of interactive science and cast question types last school year in 2017. We did not participate as we were really uh, concentrating our efforts around the computer-based grades four through eight tests. Um, but what they found out is the students responded quite positively as did the teachers. We know that there'll be a 2018 biology tryout. We look forward to participate in that tryout if it fits in our scheduling at that end of the school year. Um, so while we continue to update uh, everybody on the new next generation MCAS test, it's important to remind everyone that also at the December 6th, this final in my next generation MCAS update, on December 6th we'll be celebrating the achievement of our 2017 MCAS students um, in the district and um, we'll be celebrating our top legacy MCAS students as well as our top next generation MCAS students. So um, I think that update is probably the most positive in all of this. So again, that's at our December 6th uh, meeting. Thank you, Mrs. Green. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Mrs. Bennett? Um, just a couple of quick ones. You mentioned the, um, the high school biology yes. trial. Kind of. Are we, we allowed to ask that we'd like to participate? Is it up to us to ask or not? Well, we don't know yet. Uh, there will be, there's a sign-up period coming. And uh, what that means is I don't know when you sign up, will everyone who signs up have an opportunity to try it out or will they particularly choose certain uh, districts? We're not quite sure yet. Uh, it's always great to get a look at it ahead of time. It helps our teachers and our students get comfortable with what to expect. So, you know, there's content, there's practice, and then there's the lay of the land, learning to use a new tool. We, if, whenever we have an opportunity to do that, we look forward to it. And previously they had, uh, DDSC had offered, you know, pilot suits, some of these things that you wanted to hold the school or district harmless if they participated in this. And this is Again, a little bit more escalated. And we're not quite sure that that's going to be the case. So but we'll, we'll wait and see what the details of it are. And it's certainly something we're very interested in. And just one last question. You may not know the answer to this, but have you heard any rumors that the science test will be every year? It's a consideration because, again, they're grade band standards now in Massachusetts. The, um, you know, the impact is on how much time are we testing. So I think that is the larger consideration now. And there's a cost. There's a cost to testing at every grade level. So I think if we get good reports in the fifth grade and the eighth grade that give us some good grade level reports, that'll help us in our instruction planning. Um, and maybe we'll satisfy, you know, the need or whatever we are. We're going to develop, Jason didn't even have that on, we have <laughs> one vision for uh, STEM instruction, but one of our visions is a grade level district-wide assessment done through technology that help us know are we, um, are we, and we've had these with math and other, we've had, it's a benchmark really, how are we doing at each grade level now implementing those standards? Because this has been a really big lift for K through four teachers to have science every day. And now bring in the resources and then let's gauge is what we're doing effective so that when we get to grade five, it doesn't feel again like on the way with all of the grade teachers. Because we really, we look at it as a grade five test, it's not, it's a K through five test. So we need to implement some of those assessments along the way for our own um, plans. 
it, is, it looks likely that they're going to look at making a determination on the social studies history test. Mm -hmm. And that will probably push whether that's what's going to happen in the science test. Thank you. Right over to you, Mrs. Matthews, for the budget timeline process. Okay, well, we have kicked it off as of noon today. Every principal has been sent their Google Doc to update their FY19 budget sheets. I do, tomorrow morning, I'll be working on the transportation and special education ones to give out to those administrators. Um, since I have put this in, I have talked to the town manager, Mr. Montori. This timeline might be moved up a little bit based on the fact that everything has to be a little earlier now because we mail out the warrants. Our dates are now earlier. I did this before. I found that out. So I'm going to talk to him tomorrow just to see if I do have to submit some <coughs> other things earlier. But as of um, December 8th, which I believe all the principals, because they have it all, I guarantee they'll get it to me before then. But I should have all their budgets, and we're going to be setting up individual meetings with the principals with the superintendent and the assistant superintendent to go over what they have submitted. We also have that personnel needs, so they have um, the ability to request for positions, but they will be kind of looked through through the superintendent and the assistant superintendent based on the needs for the district and what is best for the district. Um, by December 15th, I also need the principals to submit to me their um, top two priorities of what they need. And on or before this January 12th, and that's the fluctuating date that I'm not really quite sure. Uh, we will be submitting our budget <coughs> to the town manager. Um, as you know, it's a negotiating year for all unions. So what you're going to see this year is what you saw three years ago. The only thing that's going to show up in the salary lines is any steps, lanes, increases, any increases in longevity. We're going to have a separate line that's going to be for the salary negotiations because by the time we have to submit this, the negotiation more than likely will not be all done. So we're going to put that separately. Uh, we will plan on having our um, first budget workshop on January 24th, 2018. It's going to be here in the library at 6.30 p.m. We will have a public hearing on February 14th. Also, we'll be here prior to the school committee meeting. Sometime in March, and again, this is a date that we usually work with the finance committee to kind of come up with a date to sit together. We'll be sitting with the finance committee in submitting the budget and kind of having a presentation for them. We'll have our second public hearing on March 21st, 2018, here in the high school at 6.30. And then, once everything is all set, we'll be submitting our budget for uh, approval, hopefully approval, at the annual town meeting on May 7th, 2018. Does anybody have any questions about the timeline? Want me to change anything? Is there any questions, Mrs. Bennett? Um, I just had a question. I think you've done this in the past, I assume you'll continue this. Um, when you're going to sit down with the town manager, mm -hmm. you've given us a copy of what you're going to present to them at the time. Yep. Yeah, and when it comes to the um, the one-time funds of the capital project, we always work off of our, our ongoing yeah. capital plan, we usually take those. If, if we happen to add anything, obviously, we we'll kind of discuss with the parents first. But usually, it's everything that we already have on the plan. But I'll make sure that we submit it to you before we sit down. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else have any questions? Okay, moving right along. Excellent job, Mrs. Matthews. I love to see it all laid out. So we know if we have things that we want, we can email you. And Right, everyone should continue to provide feedback to our business manager as well as our assistant superintendent and superintendent. Um, next up is school committee matters of interest. We're going to start with you tonight, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd first like to thank the uh, district for sending me to the Massachusetts Association of School Committees and School Superintendents Joint Conference at the beginning of November. <coughs> I learned a ton down there. It was uh, uh, time well spent. I learned about 21st century learning, uh, ELL, uh, social emotional learning, inclusion, uh, programming specifically designed for all students where all means all. So um, that was a fantastic thing. Uh, it was my honor to represent the committee as well as a delegate. So 
Uh, thank you very much for that uh, opportunity and experience. Uh, moving on tomorrow night, there's a special education PAC meeting right here at 6.30 uh, down the hall. As Grace mentioned, the Decker is holding their annual fashion show tomorrow night as well. That starts at 7 o'clock. Uh, if you haven't been there, uh, go to it. It's fantastic. I think last year they raised well over $10,000 for that Megan McCarthy uh, cancer fund. So that's a fantastic thing. Um, December 1st at 6 o'clock, right at the Town Common, uh, they have an annual tree lighting ceremony for anyone that's interested in that. And congratulations to all our fall student athletes and teams. Uh, more specifically, as the superintendent mentioned, the uh, unified basketball team, which was a success all year. And, uh, and it was great to see not only our students, but all those kids uh, last night and just playing for the pure joy of the game. So. Uh, that's an absolutely unbelievable program. And, uh, try to get out and catch that. Um, our girls soccer, field hockey, and volleyball teams, all which qualified for the state tournament. Uh, our golf team, which qualified for the state sectionals this year. Our boys cross country team, which finished third on the state and will be competing in the all states. And of course, our girls cross country team who won the states this year and will also be competing in the all states. Uh, to our football team, Northern Sectional Champions, uh, they're playing in the Eastern Mass Championship game this Saturday down in Weymouth. Uh, they're playing North Attleboro at 11 o'clock. Uh, if they win that game, they'll be Eastern Mass Champs and we'll play in the Super Bowl. So, um, I'd also like to acknowledge, congratulate, and thank the following NBC Coaches of the Year this year. Uh, both our boys and girls cross country, Peter Malloy for the girls and Peter Fortunata for the boys. Pat Ryder, our field hockey coach, and Jim Sullivan, our golf coach. And to Brian Aylward, which I think is a fantastic honor, the Massachusetts Football Officials Coach of the Year, where he's recognized by what's normally seen as an adversary out on the field uh, by those people as Coach of the Year. So, uh, great job. And one final public service announcement um, with the holiday upon us, uh, the most one of the most traveled and celebrated days ahead of us next Wednesday. Please be mindful of distracted driving. Um, it certainly can be prevented, so put your text down. Don't answer that email, your tweet, your Instagram, your Snapchat, whatever device that you may be using uh, in, your, in your car that day. And please just put it down. It could have uh, implications that could be unfortunately lasting for your entire life. So. Uh, thank you very much, and I hope everyone has a wonderful and uh, loving Thanksgiving with plenty of friends and family. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Francis? Thank you. That's how it's <laughs> uh, I have uh, just one thing. Um, last Thursday night, I was honored to be uh, uh, part of a great event at the Tewksbury Country Club, uh, the Lions Club, uh, and also uh, Liz Carey set up a night to honor all Korean and uh, Vietnam era veterans. It was a tremendous night place was packed um, and uh, what I really got out of it was to see all, all fellow veterans there. It was just tremendous. And the one thing uh, that it was a retired Marine Major General who did a tremendous speech and what he mentioned, which is true, uh, the year before the World War II veterans were honored, which is the greatest generation, and this year they honored the Korean and Vietnam era veterans, which was the forgotten generation. So we must make sure that that never happens again and to honor our veterans that are serving currently especially. Again, it was a great night. And I want to thank Mr. Ginsburg especially for giving us the, uh, the venue for the, such a great event. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Francis. Mr. Cutler? All set, Thank you, Mr. Governor, Mr. Bennett. And the chair is all set as well this evening. I think no one can follow up with Mr. Sullivan. That was uh, terrific. Thank you. Um, Future school committee meetings, our next meeting is scheduled for December 6th, so we'll see everybody then. Hopefully you'll tune in. As always, if anyone has any future agenda items, feel free to get those to myself and Mr. Malone. And at that, this, we have a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. So I have a motion, I have a second on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. We'll see everyone on December 6th. Have a wonderful holiday. Thank you.